When it comes to making videos about Timu, usually it's all fun and games. But I want to take a closer look to find out just how much money we are actually saving and if we are getting a proper value over our good old reliable Amazon. I bought some of the best selling and most reviewed items from a few categories off of these websites to find out. So let's jump right in. So first up, we are taking a look at two of the best selling controllers on the internet. This one's from Amazon. It's a Power A wired Xbox controller for Series X and S. And this one from Timu is without a name brand, but the price difference here is pretty substantial. The Power A costs $27, and the one from Timu is a little south of 20. To start, I'm going to look at the Timu one. Wireless controller, enjoy your gaming time. Well, thank you. My products don't usually come with a nice message, but uh, I can certainly use it because there's nothing else on this box that screams interesting. <laughs> I do not know what to expect here. Okay, well, first of all, I should give a disclaimer. Obviously, this is more of a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller style product versus the Xbox One that we have from Power A. But I'll say on first impression, this controller actually feels decent. If there's something with this controller that feels like we didn't pay a lot of money for it, it's the fact that it actually sounds hollow. Like pushing down on the buttons, I can hear some echo. But I will say the buttons do feel good. The analog sticks, while they don't have a lot of resistance, they at least feel okay. They're not the most grippy. And because it is very similar to a Switch Pro controller, it actually has wireless connectivity as well. I'll have to see if that wireless capability actually works with our PC. Let me set this off to the side though, because we have our Power A controller for reference. Right off the bat, I will say that this controller controller feels very similar to the official Xbox One, as it should, because the box actually has that design for Xbox emblem on it. So this is kind of an official third-party Xbox controller. And again, it certainly feels like it in the quality. I also like the rougher texture on this Power A controller. It's way more grippy compared to the satin finish on this Switch Pro Controller from Timu. Yeah, that ain't it. Oh, and something else that this Power A controller also has that's really nice for convenience is this 3.5 mil aux jack. So you can plug in a pair of headphones or a microphone to have comms and whatnot uh, when you're playing your Xbox or PC games. But that's enough of the surface level impressions. We obviously have to game with it. So let's get our laptop set up here. Two very boring minutes later. All right, so I got everything all set up here. Here, we're gonna play some Fall Guys. I even have our Timu Pro Controller hooked up over Bluetooth. Let's just jump in and try playing some Fall Guys. Though, immediately I will say that the Timu controller is not responding at all to the Fall Guys start screen. Our Xbox controller, oh, works totally fine. All of our buttons swapped over. What about if I plug it in via USB? Okay, immediately plugging it over USB-C gets this Pro Controller to work. So maybe wireless isn't the play. Solo chill. Man, the Fall Guys music is so good. I'm like some pineapple dude. <laughs> I think I only got a victory like once in Fall Guys. Oh. <laughs> Okay, both controllers vibrate at the same time. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, immediately the analog sticks do feel quite cheap. They're not giving me enough resistance here. They honestly feel rather light. But man, those hollow sounding buttons though. Uh, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Launch me. Oh no, it's backwards. No. Ah. No. Oh, but I can qualify though. <gasps> oh, launch me. Yeah, okay, we did it. I don't know, it just feels like a toy, which I mean, obviously it's a game controller, but like, let me try this Xbox controller for comparison here. Oh yeah, immediately this Power A controller feels way better. I like the texture on it. It's way more grippy. And while this Power A controller feels also a tad bit hollow. These analog sticks 
have way better response to them. They snap better to center. They don't feel as cheap. I think quality in terms of build overall is better. And while this is more of an apples to oranges comparison, I think that the Xbox style controller does fill my hands in better compared to the pro style controller from Timu. I'd go for the name brand on this one. I think Amazon has the win. Next up, we are taking a look at keyboards. This one from Timu costs $20. Apparently, it's the fourth best-selling keyboard on the website, at least as of the making of this video. So what does our $20 get us? This bag is not a toy. Well, I beg to differ. Actually, never mind. I know it's not a toy because it will not fit over my... Oh, wait, it does! I don't know what they're talking about. You, you, you cannot suffocate with this. They even gave me breathing holes. Okay, oh! Okay, so we have our 60% layout keyboard with the shift key <laughs> not pre-installed for some reason. We're off to a good start here. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, what I would call stuck. There's a little bit of assembly involved and I don't think that was on purpose. So I have to put this bracket into a slot here. Cool, I did it. You buy a $20 keyboard off Timu and some things might fall apart in the box. So this right here is the Simperdiri. Simperdiri, Simper, Snurp, Snurp. I'm developing a stutter just saying this name. Uh, Simperdiri, whatever that means. Must be Latin. Wait, I didn't even read. Uh, <laughs> elegance, wisdom, malevolence. That sounds like a tagline for some kind of designer fragrance. Elegance, wisdom, belevenance, Dolce & Gabbana. Belevenance? <laughs> but violence The opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> So what we have here is a 60% membrane keyboard. You don't have your arrow keys, which I guess is give or take depending on your personal preference. And while I personally love my mechanical keyboards, I think for $20, membrane isn't all that bad. And you do still get that tactile bump. I think it feels okay for $20 if I'm being real. Though for our Amazon counterpart, we have this kit from Red Dragon. So for $40, you get another membrane keyboard here, which is a full layout with your number pad and everything. But it also even comes with a mouse for that price as well. Now, while this is most certainly a good deal in terms of value, the main reason why I chose this Red Dragon over something like a Razer off of Amazon is because this is actually one of the most popular keyboards that you can buy on the website today. I kid you not, the Amazon listing actually has 40,000 reviews on it, and most of them are positive. Yep. Also a membrane keyboard. In fact, uh, they feel roughly the same. The Timu one is a bit crisper, but also rough around the edges. Like our space bar rattles a lot. The stabilizers on here aren't really doing a good job. Whereas with the modifiers and whatnot on our Red Dragon, it's a way more silent typing experience. In terms of build quality, I like the Red Dragon more so far, but let's hop these onto a game and see how they actually perform. Five minutes later. Let me get a comfy gaming experience here. We're also using our Red Dragon mouse that came with our bundle. This does feel rather nice too. The texture is pretty grippy. <gasps> Ooh, okay. This keyboard is fine for gaming but it wouldn't be my first choice. My main issue with it is that it rides pretty high. I have to actually elevate my wrist with my elbow, which doesn't feel all that great. Um, and there's no adjustment on the bottom here for height. So you can't like angle it or anything to give you a better position. That space bar is so rattly which for gaming, especially if you're jumping a lot in Valorant, uh, it does sound like and feel like you cheaped out. I got him, I got him. Ah, okay, nope. Uh, yeah, it's because I'm playing with the Timu keyboard, yeah. <gasps> can't click those heads if you can't afford good peripherals. Yeah, that's why I got 
shot a lot. Now playing with our Red Dragon keyboard from Amazon, this is a little more of a comfortable experience. It's lower profile, so I don't have to angle my wrist as much. And this one actually does have a bit of adjustability on the bottom as well to give you a better angle. Plus I do like that I am not hearing this keyboard as much. It'll make those late night gaming sessions a little more tolerable. Yeah, this is way more comfortable to play with. Again, apples to oranges a bit here. The fact that this did come with a mouse for the price does mean a lot to me. Now the kit does cost double the price on Amazon versus Timu. You gotta factor that in a little bit. But I think even if we're considering that the Red Dragon is a $20 keyboard with a $20 mouse, I think that you are getting a better value with the set that you buy on Amazon overall. Amazon's got another win here. It ain't looking good for Timu. Next up, we have a non-descript box. This is our LED strip light. So this is a full RGB setup. We have a remote control over here, which looks generic as heck. And these are the light bars themselves. And these guys feel, oh wow. <laughs> Oh man, this is a symphony in plastic if I've ever seen one. Wow, that is, uh, that is cheap. But rightfully so though, because on Timu, these are going for $8.39. There are 816 reviews on this listing with most of them being positive. Product as described, really good, quality, really good, quality, well worth the money, well worth the money, well worth the money. And two people thought that review was helpful, even though it sounded like it was written by an AI in mass hallucination mode. Efficient and bright, great item, thank you. Efficient and bright, efficient and bright, efficient and bright, efficient and bright. Okay, yeah, these reviews look very planted, but there's nothing for it. Let's plug these in and see how bright they really get. Oh, that's pretty neat. So you can actually mount these lights both horizontally and vertically. Versatile. Man, I sound like the team reviewer. <laughs> Versatile, very good, bright. Oh, wow. Okay, I mean, here in our studio lighting, which gets fairly bright, these are somewhat faint. If I turn off our main light, Oh yeah, look at that. In a normal setup that's not a film studio, I can get behind this thing. Let's try out our remote as well. So we got R, G, oh wait, what? It only did one of them. This is, a, this is some This is some Mario and Luigi vibes though. Um, I guess maybe I have to point, oh, that's, okay. So I have to point at it specifically. So each of these have their own IR receiver. So that's actually kind of nice. So if I do this, it'll only change one of them. But if I do this, it'll change both of them. Okay, so you have to kind of select. So maybe if I like use my hand to guide the signal, yeah. Cool, so you can, you, can, you can be a little smart about it. Is there an RGB mode or like, what about this? So definitely don't expect much in the way of effects. But of course we are here for the comparison and one of the best selling RGB lights you can buy on Amazon today is this set of light bars from Govi. Now the sense of scale between Timu and Amazon is certainly different. And this one has quite a lot of purchases and reviews. And as you'd expect from Amazon, the reviews on here are way more thoughtful and written by real people. So definitely keep that in mind when you're shopping between Timu versus Amazon, though I guess that's kind of obvious, isn't it? I have not opened up any of these products before the video, and this one already has the tape pre-cut on it. This is kind of making me wonder if someone actually returned this to the Amazon warehouse. Oh yeah, look, even the instruction manual is kind of just hanging out there. Mm. Well, hopefully this is in good shape because I've definitely had a fair few products from Amazon shipped to me that were definitely not new condition. But at the very least, these Govi lights seem fine for now. Oh, this one was pre-ripped. Someone changed their mind and Amazon gave me a new product that wasn't really new. Oh yeah, look, this one was also kind of ripped. 
Personally, if I'm buying a new product on Amazon, I want it to be new. I don't want someone to have touched it before. I don't know what went wrong with this. For loads of reasons, Timu is far from being a perfect merchant, but I think this also goes to show that Amazon also doesn't come off scot-free either. We plug it in. Oh, that is bright. Holy sh <laughs> Okay. Uh, this is a whole different league of bright. As it should be because these lights cost $50. So we're talking about... So we're talking five times the price, and I'll say that this might be five times the brightness. <laughs> oh, wow. We turn off our main film light over here, but you can just straight up use this to illuminate me on camera in a pinch. Wow. That is, woo. Okay. Yeah, uh, that is uh, that is definitely a $50 light, all right. On top of being super bright, Govi also has an inline remote as well to give you some control over what the light is doing, as well as way more effects than the Timu one. But really how they want you to control these is with the app over Bluetooth. I don't think people are going to necessarily cross shop these two products super seriously, but I think there is an argument to be made that buying something like this for $8 will offer most of the functionality that this has at 50 bucks. And even if you spend a little bit more on Timu and get a set of like $20 light bars, which we've certainly have done in the past on this channel, you really start to wonder where your $50 is going compared to just going a little bit cheaper on Timu, at least for some types of products. And while I'm kind of tempted to give the win to Timu, I think that at least for the lights that we have here on the table, there are tons of upsides and downsides to both of them. So weirdly enough, I'm gonna call this one a draw. Moving right along, I have two sets of gaming headsets. This one from Timu is the Koshin each. It's the G2000, which is one of their best-selling gaming headsets on the platform. And we also have this pair of Turtle Beaches, the Recon 50. On Amazon is going for $25 right now, and it's listed as having 96,000 ratings. And while the Timu one, when we first bought it, was the same price at $25, I actually ended up getting a price adjustment from Timu which landed me an $8 credit. Putting this at math, 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 25 minus eight, $17. All right, so that is a lot of glossy plastic. Wow. For as plasticky as they are, they don't creak all that much. They are a little hollow, but let's see how they fit on my head. Oh, okay. Uh, the adjustment is fine, but it is a bit plasticky and kind of rough. Ow. And when you force the adjustment, all of that plastic noise just creaks in your ear. Oh, that's a little uncomfortable. It's a shame that the ear cups themselves don't have much range of motion apart from the flexing of the body itself. But at the very least, the ear pads add a little bit of uh, extra padding if you will. So it's not an uncomfortable experience, but it's a few more steps away from being ideal. And let's actually plug these headphones in. Plug it in, plug it in. For a $17 pair of Timu gaming headphones, music sounds great on this. It's certainly not perfect, but that bass is seriously punchy, which I think you'll want at least for some immersion when you're playing things like shooting games. Like it's not crisp. You do lose out a bit on the mids and highs, but things still come across fairly clean. If you want your weapons to have presence, these $17 headphones absolutely do that. I also realized I haven't plugged it in via USB. Oh yeah, not too shabby. Looks like the back of an LG Ultra Gear monitor. Right now I am recording with the built-in microphone on the G2000 using Audacity on my MacBook. Now I am recording with the built-in microphone on the G2000. That's a sound being picked up from this microphone? Yo, what the heck? That's really good. But 
we still haven't opened up our Amazon boy, the Turtle Beach Recon 50. So for $8 more, what exactly are we getting? Points to Turtle Beach for functionality. The mic is removable, so if you don't want to rock with it, you can just take it off. That's great. And wow, okay, 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 okay. I also like this a lot. If the extra $8 go anywhere, it is in the quality. Yes, it is still a bunch of plastic everywhere, but it does feel a little more premium. The finish won't attract a lot of fingerprints or dust. It'll be more resistant to uh, gamer things, sweat, fingerprints, yeah. There is certainly less creaking as well on here. They are a lighter and more compact pair of headphones. Most importantly, the ear cups do rotate and... Oh no, these uh, ear cups are actually big enough just barely to go over my ear. So plus points there. You know what else that seven extra dollars gives you? Definitely way more comprehensive sound quality. I think this is a better well-rounder, especially for music. I do get a little bit of that bass. It's not as punchy, but I think where it makes up for it is the clear mids and highs. Vocals sound really good here. Yeah, this is way better for music, but obviously it's also a gaming headset. So we absolutely need to try some games. You get way more detail in these turtle beaches and that's for sure. Again, I think the thing I loved about the G2000 was there was a lot more punch when it came to these shots. However, here the shots are a bit more crisp, but I think it really just depends on what you are looking for sound signature wise. I think generally speaking, these turtle beaches have better sound quality. So this is what the microphone on the Turtle Beach Recon 50 sounds like. You'll also get to hear of what that handling noise is like, but but hopefully the mic sounds good. Oh, that's peaking. And this is what it sounds like now that it's at a good distance away from my face. From what I can gather listening to both of these microphones on my MacBook speakers, I think Turtle Beach records my voice very clear, which I think you'd want for obviously communication in games and voice chats on Discord. But weirdly enough, I think the G2000 captures more of my body. More of my body, ew. <laughs> <laughs> captures more body in my voice, at least for how deep mine is. But as an overall package, oh boy, man, what would I pick? I think sound quality wise, I'd go with the Turtle Beach. With the mic, I would go with the G2000. Actually, overall package, I'd really go Turtle Beach, I think. I think it's a little more well-rounded. Yeah, I mean, it's close, but I'm gonna give it to the Turtle Beach. Those 96,000 reviews on Amazon were certainly not lying. 4.4, 4.5, stars? I can absolutely believe it. When it comes to cheap gaming mice, it's hard to go wrong with Razer's Death Adder Essential. And turns out, whether it is on Amazon or on Timu, that is exactly what they recommend you buy. This one I bought from Amazon for $25, and this one I bought off Timu was also $25. And looking at the packaging, the only way that I can really tell that one is from Timu versus Amazon is the fact that the Timu one is just littered with way more information and stickers and whatnot. But otherwise, the packaging itself looks exactly the same. And so I want to see if this mouse is actually real. Open these as side by side as I can possibly do it. One has a proper instruction manual, which was our Amazon one, but the Timu one has this bootleg ass looking, what? Oh, that's not even the right font. So maybe my hunches are starting to be right? That don't look real at all. So just as a reminder, the black mouse is our Amazon one and the white one is from Timu. So the cables on both sides look absolutely identical, even down to the Razer branding on the actual USB port. And side by side here, all the text and stuff lines up fine, though I think the printing on the white one looks slightly off, like blurrier. Yeah, all of it looks virtually identical. Clicks and scroll wheel also pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, look, if this is a fake, then it's uh, most certainly a good one. Looking at these side by side though, not gonna lie, the white LED on the white mouse looks pretty clean. Not that that's really an indicator of it being bootleg because I think lighting in these types of products is pretty standard and easy to do these days. But man, that white is way brighter than the green. <laughs> 
I think by appearances, the fake mouse is uh, doing a very good job here. So I'm downloading Razer Synapse right now to see if the software will pick up the Death Adder Essential that we bought off Amazon, as well as if it'll figure out the one on Timu as well. Okay, so the Death Adder Essential shows up here in my devices, and we can change up all of the macros and settings and whatnot, so that's pretty standard. What about if we plug in the fake one? Survey says that is a negative. Synapse does not show up until I plug in the real one. This is the imposter. It's very, very minor, but the glides on the bottom of the real one also feel a bit smoother than the one on the fake one. That aside though, let's be real here. Like it doesn't hugely matter that this is a fake mouse in the sense of functionality. You're not gonna really notice a difference between these two unless you really had them back to back and were being very granular about your observations. But where I think the atrocities really happen is in the fact that they are the same price, whether you are buying it on Timu with a fake one or on Amazon, with the actual thing. And if you are going to buy a fake one, it should at the very least be cheaper. Otherwise, why would you go with it? Ah, oh, man. If this thing was like $10 cheaper, yeah, go for it. I think the differences will be negligible, but nah, oh, man, for the same price, Amazon. Clear winner, for sure. So what exactly have we learned here? Well, it's clear that Amazon has the more reliable selection to choose from, whether it's from the name brands, the reviews on the website, etc., etc. Though when it comes to Timu, by and large, the stuff is certainly cheaper, even when you factor in shipping cost compared to what you get on Amazon without an Amazon Prime subscription. However, your mileage with Timu will certainly vary a lot given the recommendations are aggressively driven by algorithms and rotated through constantly. However, perhaps the biggest pill to swallow, which is something that we don't normally talk about in these videos, is that Timu is generally a sketchy website. It's certainly all fun and games when we make these Timu videos. However, their terms of service generally allows them to sell all kinds of your personal data and saved information without your consent to whatever third parties want it. Credit card info, name, addresses, etc. And that f***ing sucks. If foregoing the risk is worth saving a couple of bucks or playing product gotcha to roll for something good, then cool, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. And I most certainly will not be stopping making these videos because you guys absolutely love watching them. Those hundreds of thousands of views absolutely speak for themselves and I run that risk for myself knowing that. Just keep this in mind if you are even remotely considering buying stuff on Timu, but let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel.